Hello, sisterhood. It's so amazing to see all of you beautiful women here and not one vagina hat in the room. <laughs> Praise be to God. My husband and 10 children send their greetings from Ohio and wish they could be here. Yes, you heard that right. I have 10 children. Amen. My, my oldest is 19 and my youngest is one year old. And they are by far my greatest accomplishment in life and the reason I am so active in the culture war. It's an honor to be with you women today, a group of women who love your families and your country, and you're deeply concerned about the moral plunge toward darkness and perversion that our nation has taken in recent years. One of the wisest men who ever lived said, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to a people. Can I get an amen? Now, the left hates this idea of our nation being exalted, the concept of American exceptionalism. But last time I checked, and regardless of how you voted, we are forced to admit that the American people spoke loudly last November, that they no longer wanted America to be reproached, but wanted to make America what? That's right. But we have a problem that a president cannot fix. In order for America to be great again, America must be good again. Remember, it's righteousness that exalts a nation, not just good public policy, it's righteousness. And for our nation to be good again, we, the mothers of the nation, who rock America's cradles and pray over America's children, we must be salt and light again. Salt and light. I find it interesting that these two terms, salty and lit, are all the rage in contemporary culture right now. If any of you have teenagers, you've heard the term salty and lit a thousand more times than you wish you had. If teenagers think something's cool, they say, that's lit. And if someone's upset about something, they say, why so salty? You know, why so upset? Turn to your neighbor and say, girl, why so salty? Now, some of you follow the activist mommy, but some of you have no idea who I am. And let me tell you, the activist mommy is known for being a bit salty about the agenda to destroy the moral fabric of our nation and pervert the minds of our children. That's why I filmed myself burning a copy of Teen Vogue magazine for pandering obscenity to minors and teaching our daughters how to be sodomized. Outrageous. Some are critical of me for my saltiness and think that I'm not loving enough. But just as saltiness is required at times for food to be preserved, saltiness is required for our nation to be preserved. Amen. Now, back in January, there was a woman's march, as you all know, the day after the presidential inauguration. And these women wanted to be called nasty women. And they were. <laughs> yes. Now, since we in this room do not identify with those nasty women, I want to coin a new term today. We are salty women. I'm seeing t-shirts and bumper stickers in the making. How about you? Let me ask you a question. If we were really being salty women the last decade, as we should be, would Teen Vogue be teaching our daughters how to be sodomized? No. Would drag queens be reading stories to our children in public libraries? Would our daughters be forced to share a locker room with boys? Would 3,000 babies be murdered every day through abortion? No. We have feared man more than we have feared God. We have kept our salt in its shaker, and now we are paying a hefty price. This nation 
is stinking with rottenness because we, the salt, have lost our saltiness. Let's face it, we all want to be liked, don't we? Who doesn't? It's hard to take a stand and not be liked. But if we lose our saltiness, Jesus said, we will be trampled underfoot by men. Are you tired of your values being trampled? What is the solution? We must get out of the salt shaker. We must get out of our homes as you've done today and the four walls of the church and impact our culture. We must raise our children, not the culture raise our children, not the public schools, not technology raising our children. That's why my husband and I homeschool and why we take our kids everywhere with us to watch mom and dad engage in the culture war. This is the answer. We must be willing to sting the wounds of our culture with the application of God's salty message. That means you're not always gonna be popular. But listen, salt doesn't sting when you place it on healthy flesh, does it? Salt stings when there is an open wound. Our nation suffers from a sickness called sin and God wants to use us moms to bring healing. May a movement of salty women shake off the fear of man and arise to the great task of preserving our nation and rescuing future generations. Thank you and God bless you.